An Arizona screenwriter deals with the issues of perception and reality in a documentary showing at a Valley Theater. Those stories next on Horizon. Arizona screenwriter has produced a documentary about perception and reality and our ability to change how the world affects us. People versus the State of Illusion is now showing at Harkins Camelview Theater in Scottsdale. Traffic jams, internet connections, second mortgages, single parenting, and all of those reactions to the environment produce the same physiological response. People are so focused on the content of their perceptions that they are unaware of how those perceptions are formed and how those patterns are actually helping to create the problems in life that appear to be happening to them. At a subtle level, one of the things that I think most creates these prison walls is what you might call our deepest habits of thought. I think this film is important because it brings to light the reality of our illusion. This film is important if you want to experience more love, more freedom, reconnect with who you were meant to be in this lifetime. It's often said that people are afraid of dying. I think they're more afraid of living. Once people realize that the prison walls are imaginary, that they're a figment of their own mind, then the escape is easy. Joining me now to talk about the film is Austin Vickers. He's the writer and producer of People vs. the State of Illusion. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me here. Uh, why did you make this film? Probably, you know, to uh, really deal with a lot of the subject matters that I've studied for the last 20 years. I'm a big student of psychology and neuroscience and uh, quantum physics and philosophies. And there's a lot happening in those arenas these days. We're a lot of new research coming down and I wanted to communicate some of the advances in that science to people in a way that would be compelling and thought-provoking. So that was the reason for the movie. Uh, it sounds like one of the main messages here is that you're in control of your own reality. What does that mean? Well, one of the pieces of science that's in the film that they t we talk about is if you look, for example, at the amount of information that we take in through the senses, scientists estimate, for example, we receive on average four billion bits of information or more in the, in the course of any given day. But what rises to the level of your awareness is, you know, approximately 2,000 thoughts. So when you compare that to the amount of information you're receiving, your view of reality is less than one one thousandth of one percent of the total information that's coming to you. So we can't possibly have really an objective view of reality. What we're experiencing is typically more indicative of who we are as opposed to what it is we're observing. And yet, if, if you go too far the other direction, can you start tiptoeing towards solipsism? I mean, uh, <laughs> to where it, you know everything is, is what you see and how you perceive it? Well, there certainly is an objective reality, obviously, that we respond to. But I think the point in the film and one of the points that we, we are trying to communicate to people is we don't have control over the things that necessarily happen to us, but we certainly have control over the way we view those things, the way we respond to those things. And it's really, the film is about really prompting people to become aware of that response because the way we respond in life, of course, can create limitations. How did you, f obviously you wrote the film, you wrote the screenplay for the film. Yeah. How did you work out a way to get that message across, but try to do it in an entertaining and keep the fanny in the seat kind of message. Yeah. Well, you know, the first year when I was making the film, we went out and, and filmed all the interviews with some of the top researchers and, and scientists in the fields. And then, you know, having been a professional speaker for the last 10 years and do a lot of training, people learn better by having an emotional experience. So I wrote a script 
for the film to really match the science that we knew we'd be portraying in the documentary side of the film. And I think we came up with a pretty good emotionally compelling story. You, you talk about uh, perception as reality and these sorts of ideas. I know that when uh, if we have artists, writers, uh, screenwriters on, and I, my, I'm always fascinated, especially with playwrights and screenwriters, when you are writing, you are seeing something. That's your perception. What was it like when you saw your perception all of a sudden in the hands of other people and other faces and voices and there's it up on the screen? It was an amazing experience. I mean, you know, when you're sitting in a, a, a lot of the film was written and sitting in a Starbucks and you're imagining these conversations, you know, between <laughs> characters and dialogues. And then you go through the process of uh, auditioning actors and finding those people that look like the characters you had in your mind and then ultimately to see them actually acted out on film very gratifying, uh, really, really gratifying. Gratifying, but a little, a little odd, perhaps, a little off-putting in some respects, or like take you back a little bit. Not at all. Not at all, huh? No, actually, it was, it was a thrill. This is one of the most fun projects I've ever done in my entire life. For well, let's, sure. Let's talk about your entire life because you <laughs> have, you've had quite a life, and it doesn't always necessarily deal with films and screenwriting. You were a, what, a corporate attorney? For yeah, the I, counsel. I actually started as a trial lawyer, uh, practiced trial law in Southern California for a number of years, and then went in-house with a Fortune 500 company, and ultimately served as the general counsel of one of their divisions in Europe before I, I got into this line of work. So how did you get into this line of work? <laughs> I went through a recovery process after overcoming the attorney part of things, I think. But uh, again, I've just always been a student. I, I read a lot. I inquire a lot. You know, the process of being a trial attorney is really obviously asking a lot of questions things that I love to do. And uh, I started writing. I wrote a book about it. And for the last decade, I've been teaching corporations about you know, self-awareness and emotional intelligence. And so the film was just a really nice way to package a lot of the learning and a lot of the research that I've been exposed to in a way that is, I think, compelling for people. Well, and I, I ask about how you went from A to B because change is, is something that I know you deal in and you talk about a lot and, and want to focus on. Yes. And, and so how apply the perception, the reality, these sorts of things we talked about with folks who want to change, yeah. what they're doing, who they are. Yeah. You know, it's important. I think one of the distinctions I wanted to make in this film is there have been other films out there and there have been other suggestions that we can change simply by positive thinking. And I think that's actually a little destructive because sometimes if people think that it's that easy to change, then, um, and they don't actually change by their positive thinking, they get frustrated and give up hope. And we really wanted to instill a lot of hope in people that change is possible by showing them exactly what is the process for change, how does it occur, what's going on inside of the brain when somebody is embarking on an, you know, the attempt to change their life, and then really show them, in fact, that you can. So that's what we try to portray in the film. So, so what is the process for change, and what is going on inside the brain? <laughs> well, do you have 86 minutes to attend our <laughs> film? No, we Arkans don't. That, that's our reality, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's really about mastery. It's really about understanding, for example, what it is that we master. One of the metaphors we use in the film is mastering a golf swing. You know, we know from hearing about the life of Tiger Woods, for example, that his father used to try to, you know, yell at him and throw things at him to distract him when he was practicing his golf swing so that he would become a master of the golf swing without regard to what was happening in his environment. Well, the same thing is true with how people are in their um, habits and of emotional behaviors. You know, some people are so excellent at mastering suffering or negativity or uh, judgment about others that it doesn't matter what's happening in their environment. It, it's almost like that environment will have no influence. So we have to learn to become masters of a habit of thinking that is constructive and that is imaginative and creative if we ultimately want to change and that's what we really talk about in the film. And the film itself, I've, I've seen the reviews for the film, some have been pretty good, some not so good. Yes. How do you handle something, especially the not so good ones? Well, you know, I think it's great. I mean, as long as people are, you know, the film, this film is a little different because sometimes films are meant to kind of distract us and this film is actually not made to distract us. It's actually made to us to, made to exist examine the way we look at life. And I, I read actually two reviews from two gentlemen from the same magazine, in fact, that one, you know, completely hammered the movie, the other one loved the movie and thought it was emotionally compelling. And it's like any experience. I mean, that's one of the points of the movie is that, again, what we're experiencing is more indicative of who we are. 
So I think it's interesting for people to go to the movie, see the kind of experience they have, and one of the questions they should certainly ask themselves is, you know, is my view of this film indicative of the way that I see life? And if it is, maybe question that. And if you see it again a few years from now, maybe you'll see it in a whole different way. Absolutely, and, and for sure that happens. We know with people over time, you know, we can go through the same kind of an experience or read a book again or see a movie and see it in a whole new way. And that's how we know that we're actually contributing to the experience that we ever have in any situation. So. Well, well good luck with the film. It's good to have you here, and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I hope people come out this Saturday. I'm going to be doing a Q&A, actually. Uh, after the 7 p.m. showing at Harkins. At, Har at Camelview. Yeah, all people right. People come out. Very good.